This short video will begin to introduce electronic configurations. So electronic configurations are basically a way to construct an atom. If you look, for example, at carbon 12, so we know any element has two numbers. The larger number is the atomic mass. The smaller of the two numbers is the atomic number. And we know from counting protons, neutrons, and electrons that the atomic number, the smaller number, is the number of electrons if it's a neutral atom. So I've got six electrons, but where are they? So you write electronic configurations with a periodic table. And I guess this would be an appropriate time for me to hold up my vintage looking periodic table. So let's just take a second to inspect the periodic table. The periodic table consists of, if we ignore, oh, it's hard to see upside down, if we ignore hydrogen, so imagine hydrogen's not there, then we're left with this rectangle here. This rectangle is called the S block. It's two columns, a rectilinear structure. Then we've got this rectangle in the middle. This is called the D block, D for dog, S for Sally, D for dog. We've got this rectangle over here. We ignore helium. We've got this rectangle over here. That's the P block. P for Paul. And then down here we have the F block that we don't really use in Chem 65. We worry about that later. So mainly we look at the S and the P block in Chem 65 and we'll look at some examples of the D block but not too much. But to learn how to write electronic configurations, you have to look at the whole periodic table. So we're going to read this like a book. We're going to start in the top left. We're going to read line at a time right across. Then we're going to go to the second line and read right across. The third line, read right across, etc. until we get to the bottom. Okay, so we start off in line one and we read right across line one and there's only one, two boxes in line one. Now each box contains an electron. So I've got one line and I start off in the S block, but there's only two boxes. So that would be one S two. I started off in line one. I'm in the S block and there's two boxes in line one. Okay. Now, carbon, if you look, is over here in line two. So I'm not quite there yet. I start line two, and I've got one, two boxes in the S block in line two. So I'm on line two, I'm in the S block, and I've got two boxes. Okay. So I'm over here now, a beryllium. Then I've got to go all the way across here. There's no boxes. I'm still in line two, but now I'm in the P block. To get to carbon, I've got to go two boxes into the P block. So I'm on line two, P block, two boxes. Line two, P block, two boxes. So I stop here, I've landed at carbon by reading the periodic table. So let's put her down. Let's inspect what we have. Notice we have groups of three. We have a number, a letter, and a superscript. A number, a letter, a superscript. A number, a letter, a superscript. So I've got a number, a letter, and a superscript, let's call it N. The number 
the line, this is equal to the period number. It's also known as the shell. But interestingly, it's also the energy. It's the energy. So previously we've called energy N. So this is the N from our calculations that we did in a previous video. Um, okay. The letter is the subshell. It's also the block. So if I'm in the S block, I have an S subshell. It's the orbital. And N is the number of electrons. So if I look here, I've got two electrons, two electrons, two electrons. So I've got two plus two plus two is six. So these are my six electrons. I know that two of my electrons are in energy level 1 in an s orbital. Another two electrons are in energy level 2 in an s orbital. And another two electrons are in energy level 2, but this time in a p orbital. If I were to convert this electronic configuration to a shell diagram, then I'm looking at how many electrons are in each shell. Well, a shell is my energy level. So in energy level 1, I have two electrons. In energy level 2, there are two of them. In energy level 2, I have four electrons. It's interesting to draw a shell diagram. It has a little bit less information, but it has presented the information in a way that emphasizes the following. It emphasizes the difference between what's known as core electrons and valence electrons. Core electrons, like the name suggests, are inside the atom, in the innermost part of the atom. Valence electrons are on the outside. Uh, so that if this were a planet, this would be the core of the Earth. This would be the crust of the Earth, where you and I are standing now. And obviously, if you add these up, you get the total electrons. Now the total electrons equals Z, the atomic number. So yes, there are six electrons in carbon, but they're not all equal. You can see the various flavors of electrons, and you can see they're in two categories, core and valence. The importance of identifying valence electrons are that valence electrons are what dictate chemistry. So your chemistry is because of your valence electrons.